Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here, and welcome or welcome back to another YouTube video on the channel. And today, guys, we are going to be continuing our three game match review series. Yes, the three game match reviews, another big one coming up as always. Um, this is round 13 of the AFL 2022 season, and in this round, we had Richmond versus Port Adelaide. Essendon vs. Carlton, and Freeman vs. Hawthorne, and I'll tell you, three very big games. Uh, the finals as well were looking very important after, well, one of these games, and, and the other um, did really have a lot as well. Uh, and the, All three of them really meant at least a big thing for one team. Uh, Richmond vs. Port Adelaide will start us off for the return of Thursday Night Footy in Round 13 of the 2022 AFL season. So, yes, the return of Thursday night footy was in this game where Richmond hosted Port Adelaide at the MCG. Looked to be, well, really a season-defying game for both the clubs, really. If Port Adelaide won finals, reopened. If uh, Richmond won, well, they jump into finals action so far. Uh, so, Richmond 11-11-77. Got over Port Adelaide 10-5-65. Is this Port Adelaide season over or just about over? With Sydney next week. If they lose to them, their season will be done and dusted. So, uh, Port Adelaide, next week they got their last roll of dice to secure finals in Richmond. Well, they've been, well, a front runner to try and get into the eights, uh, is short to say. So, this game so this game was a very big one. Um, and Richmond were the better of the sides. Uh, Richmond had five first quarter goals, Port Adelaide only managing the two. Port Adelaide got out to the early lead, but Richmond brought it back in the next five goals. Um, the second quarter was Port Adelaide. They wrangled momentum back and two in the third quarter as well. Uh, but in the final term, was a, it was a very 50-50 game, and Richmond just were the better of the sides. Um, at the MCG, there was no surprise that Richmond did win. Port Adelaide really did put in the effort, actually. Uh, I thought they were going to go down by more than this. Carl Aim on 29 disposal, three, mar three martial goals. 122 fantasy for Amon, 10 tackle for Jack Graham. Uh, but, yeah, Richmond were over them for most of the game, and... Um, Inaccuracy probably did almost... They, they probably should have won this game by a little bit more. And, and Richmond were more dominating as well. So, um, yeah, Richmond were lucky to win this. Uh, Port Adelaide were lucky to stay in this game. 122 fantasy for Amon. Uh, pretty much by far best on ground. 103 for Burton. 96 for Graham Boak. And 91 for Burn Jones. And 90 for Voston. 89 for Rosie. And the big Ruckman. 88 for Nan Curvis. 86 for Short. Now we'll go to goals and behinds. Three goals for Marshall. Two for Dusty. You can't really stop Mar um, Dusty. Now three goals. No, not three. Sorry. Two goals for uh, Judson Clark, the debut, uh, the, the debutant for Richmond. Uh, and then everyone else just got the singular. Amon was busy with 29 disposals, as two were Baker, Houston, and Wines, collecting 26, 25. Cotram, Prestia, Burton, and Boak. Uh, we'll go to the marks now. 10 for Amon, 9 for Vlosten, 8 for Burton and Bonner, 7 for Tarrant. Tackles, 10 for Graham. Oh, wow. 10 for Graham. There goes 5 for Pickett, Power, Pepper and Finlayson. That's a pretty big gap. And then 4 for Rouse, Smith, Ned Curvis, Burn Jones and Boak. Now to the hit outs we go. 29 for Nan Curvis, uh, 11 for Soldo, 9 for Dixon and Finlayson. 1 for um, McIntosh, of course. There was... um. No recognised Ruckman for Port Adelaide, which was uh, disappointing for them. Um, and then Richmond went inside a lot more times. They went inside 50 a lot more times than Port Adelaide, resulting to them winning. Um, and the hitouts, they dominated. Although, even though Richmond dominated the hitouts, but Port Adelaide were dominant in the clearances. Um, and then, relatively even, uh, Richmond led for basically the whole game. Um, and they were... The deserving team as well. Uh, but big win for, for Richmond and Port Adelaide. This is a big loss. It could almost be season ending. Um, with a few big clashes coming up, this is where we're going to see where they're at. And Richmond, well, they've been pretty good this year. If they can put a good team on the park, they've been extremely good and, and, and hard to beat in some ways when they have their best team. And they did this without Tom Lynch. Now to Friday night we go where Essendon's 150th year anniversary celebration game was not what they wanted as they go down 7 12 54 to Carlton's 12 out 80. Uh, to be completely honest, a boring game, really. Uh, a game that I watched 
a half of and then was like, nah, let's not watch any more of this. Because uh, it was boring. It was pretty boring, Um, to be completely honest. And the last quarter, thankfully, I didn't watch that last term because um, <laughs> nobody got a goal. Uh, but the first quarter was hard for it. Uh, both teams actually really had a crack, and Essendon were like, are they going to play? Are they actually going to play in this game? And, the, and play they did. Um, And Carlton were the better of the sides in the first term. Second quarter was all Carlton, where they managed to start manufacturing out a bit of a lead. Third quarter was all Carlton as well, even though Essendon restricted them late. Um, and then the final term was nobody, really, uh, except Essendon did have the better of the final terms. But, yeah, no goal. For um, either team in that final quarter, it would have been, just been a very contested sort of game in that final term. Um, scrappy, which, I mean, hats off to Essendon for keeping Carlton um, goalless in the final term. But as a result, they were goalless themselves. But this game wasn't much fun after the first quarter. Um, Essendon was still in it at times in the second term. But, yeah, later on, Carlton was just way too good in that third term. Said goodbye to them. I didn't really think they were going to win. Even though they may have competed in this one, I still didn't think they were going to win. And that was the case. 33 disposal for Sam Doherty. Three goals for Harry Mackay. 135 fantasy for Doherty. 10 tackles for Dylan Field. Now, Essendon were actually a little bit inaccurate. But Carlton probably, yes, they did get the four points. But only by 26 points. Uh, but again, any win that you can get is a win. Um... 135 fantasy for Doherty, 123 for Hugh, 117 for Newman, 106 for Cripps, 97 for Heppel, 93 for Kennedy Saar, 91 for Walsh. Um, and then goals behinds, three goals for Mackay, two for Jones, Kerno, Draper and Owies. Disposal, 33 for Doherty, 29 for Newman and Walsh, 28 for Cripps and Hewitt. The first Essendon play is 27 for Dylan Field, followed by Zach Merritt with 26. Wow. The marks, Nick Newman, 10, 9 for Doherty, 8 for Mackay Kennedy. Tackles, 10 for Phil, 9 for Phillips, 7 for, Lade for Laverde, 6 for Saad, 5 for Martin, Caldwell, Cripps. And now to the hit-outs we go, 24 for Phillips, 23 for DeConing, 19 for Draper, 2 for Silvani, 1 for Mackay. So, go to team stats. Um, And, like, I mean, this section was dominated by Carlton. Uh, the inside 50s were a little bit closer, but Carlton's still winning that one. Um, hit house was Essendon, but clearances was, well, relatively even, actually, um, and then, but Essendon were up 12-3 at centre clearances, and they ended up winning 13-8, so, um, yeah, Carlton did come back to win centres late in the game, um, Carlton led for most of the game as well, with their biggest lead being 38, and big win for Carlton, uh, they, they got it done really well, Essendon weren't really a chance in this one, after, well, half time they were gone. Um, Essendon tried, but again, just couldn't put up a good enough fight. And Carlton being too strong, as we expected in Friday night footy. Now to Saturday footy at Optus Stadium we go. Fremantle 14 11 95. Get over the Hawks 10 12 82. What a game of footy this one was. What a game of footy. Um, and it was really even. It was really even. Um, this this game and Hawthorne were up at uh, quarter time. The Dockers had a pretty decent start. Actually, anyone within the first thirty seconds. Um, and then kicking two, they had the first two goals of the game. Um, and then the Hawks just wanted back with the next three. Uh, and then it was even from there on with the Hawks being up five uh, goals naught. So thirty to to twenty seven at quarter time. Half time. The Hawks were up by ten. Um, no, by no mean, by no mean did any team have a comfortable lead. But um, Hawthorne did have that better second quarter, um, leading for most of it. The third quarter, though, it's traditional. It's traditional. You know what I'm going to say. You know what I'm going to say. I say it every time the Dockers play, and this happens. Their third quarter is where they won the game. Now. The Dockers, they're winning games on third quarters. If you can stop them in the third quarter, hats off to you as a team. This is where they, they turn games around. They're normally down at half time. Uh, and in this case, it was only by 10. But they were still down. And, and then they just go and they explode in the third quarter. They kick six goals to two. And that is where the turnaround came. And then in the final quarter, it was both teams got two goals with the Dockers just managing to hold off the Hawks. Um... 
But yeah, that third quarter, the Dockers are third quarter specialists. They most certainly are. 37 disposals for An- Andrew Brayshaw. His season gets better and better. Two goals for Michael Walters, 145 fantasy for Brayshaw, eight tackles for Will Brody. Uh, but what a result this one is for the Dockers. They may only win by 13, but look, the Hawks really gave it to them. The Hawks, not a bad team this year either. Uh, they're in a lot better of a place than what most people expected. But yeah, it does come down to that third quarter, as always, for the Frio Dockers. Uh, 141 fantasy for Brayshaw, 134 for Amira, 119 for Young, 112 for Ryan, 105 for Clark, 103 for Akers, and then just hitting the 100 was Sicily. Now, what's Fife in his return game? Fife, 67 with the one goal, 222 disposals for Fife, uh, two goals for Walters, Collier, Bruce, Schultz, Banfield, Moore, Wingard. Um, Lobb got one within the opening 30 seconds from there on. He was quiet. 37 disposal for Brayshaw, 33 for Sarong, 31 for Young. So Young getting uh, in with the touches and 30 for O'Meara, 28 for Mitchell, 27 for Ryan, 25 for Clark, 8, 24 for Akers, 23 for Mundy, 22 for Walters, 22 for Hughes, 22 for Fife, 22 for Brody, 22 for Sicily. Wow, 21 for Cox. And then there'd be plenty of Hawthorne people. So a lot of the Frio Dockers getting lots of the ball. Um... 12 marks for Cox, um, 10 for Young, Ryan, 9 for Sicily, does it every game, 8 for Clark, 7 for Hughes, 8 for O'Meara and Howe. Now to the tackles we go, 8 for Brody, 7 for O'Meara and Newcomb, uh, 6 for Walker, Logue, Brayshaw and Bruce. Now to the hit house we go, 36 for Darcy, 21 for Reeves, 10 for Lobb, 3 for Frost and Callow. So now go the team stats. Wow, the Dockers won a heap of the footy. 458 to 324. Obviously, the avenue for them was the handballs. They almost won that by 100. By 100. Um, they did go in. The Hawks actually went inside 15, 14 more times than the Frio Dockers, but still lost. Um, and then hit outs was the Dockers. Clearances were even. Um, the Hawks centre, the Dockers stoppage. Um... The Dogs took a lot more marks as well, although the Hawks took more marks inside 50. The Dockers did lead for most of the game, but the Hawks were still there. Biggest lead for the Dockers being 14, um, which was just about their full-time margin, and the biggest lead for the Hawks being 11. So no team's lead really got out of hand um, as well. Um, And then nothing else looking great uh, or appealing for the stats. So there you have it. Um... But yeah, the Dockers are third quarter specialists. We do know that if we've seen their past few games, that's where they can turn games around. That's where the work was. That's where the damage was dealt versus Melbourne. So uh, yeah, ever since really then, and I mean even before then, they've been really good third quarter teams. Um, and yeah, this was another prime example of their third quarter. How good they can be. Uh, and the Dockers, they are looking very good and very sharp this year and have a genuine chance at the flag this year. Uh, do Freo, or should I say flag mantle, not free mantle, flag mantle. But yeah, Freo, good win by the Fremantle Dockers over the Hawks, who did actually really try. They did give their all in this game as well. So now this round, we've got Richmond. Well, this so what we've had is Richmond 77 got over Port Adelaide 65. Essendon 54 lost to Carlton 80, and the Dockers 95 got over the Hawks 82. So what is left to come? Well, in the next match reviews, you will see Brisbane versus St Kilda, a massive clash. Uh, the winner really does take all, and for Brisbane, this is a big one. If they can win this, well, I mean, they've slidden down to third because of um, where Fremantle have risen to after their win. But if they do lose this, they're in all sorts. Uh, Brisbane, they would have lost Two, three, maybe, maybe even three in a row. Um, and for St Kilda, this will really give them a good look at the top four. Uh, but if Brisbane win this, then they really sit with the Dockers and the chance of taking over Melbourne's first spot. Uh, depending on Melbourne's result on Monday, as they play Collingwood, which Collingwood will be looking to jump back up into the eight as well and have a chance at that. And then North and the Giants on Sunday doesn't really matter, but. We are looking to see where the two teams are at. Boys this round are Adelaide, Geelong, Sydney, West Coast, Western Bulldogs, and Gold Coast. So let's go to the ladder. The ladder as it stands right now, you see, Freer are equal on points with Melbourne. If Brisbane win, they will also go equal on points with Melbourne. Um, and Melbourne lose, well, there throws a little bit of a spanner into the works. Um, so, yeah, and depending on how much Brisbane win by tonight as well up at the Gabba, 
this could be a blowout if they really can get going. But I don't see that happening. I don't see Brisbane winning over St Kilda by too much. Carlton now back up into the top four. Um, but again, St Kilda, their result is important because of Carlton's percentage. So St Kilda, if they win, they can jump back up in there. Uh, Collingwood, if they win, they will also jump in, back up into the eight temporarily. Um, Port Adelaide on 20 points could just about be over. Uh, their season could just about be over. They'll have to win next week. Uh, but anyway, that's going to wrap up another match reviews. Um, so I hope that you guys did enjoy this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. See you guys in another video on the channel. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Bye everyone. Flaming footy out.